Hello, welcome back. So it's been a long time since I posted an actual video, but um, it's not without good reason. Um, I have kind of been in a weird place in my life. Um, I lost my job. Um, and then got another job and then lost that job too, all really because of COVID um, and this pandemic. And, you know, it's just, it's been really tough for restaurants. It left me feeling like just weird because I didn't know what to do and like it wasn't really in my control and I'm not used to that. And so I sort of had to like, deal with it and figure out a way to sort of like, I needed a distraction is what I needed. I needed something to focus on that was not just like doom and gloom and what am I gonna do? So, um, I already was sort of learning Photoshop because I was interested in it. And I, um, I guess long story short is I used creating this, recoloring this, reformatting this hoi polloi deck um, as a way to learn Photoshop. And it was exactly what I needed in this time in my life. It was a, a much needed distraction. It totally allowed me to focus my energy creatively and do something fun and something that I loved and create something that I really am proud to have created. And um, yeah, so I launched it on Kickstarter after I finished the whole deck um, with a goal of $5,500. And that was just to get roughly... I was expecting to print maybe like 250 decks, I would say, max. And that was like, that was going to be to cover the backers of the campaign and then to have a few extra for people that missed out on the campaign or, you know, couldn't afford to back it at the time. I just figured I'd have a little Etsy shop and still offer them for sale. So I launched it April 1st. And, um, it was fully funded in the first seven hours, which just, like, blew my mind. It launched at 5 p.m., and when I went to sleep, it was almost fully funded. And then the next day, it just, like, kept climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing, and more people were excited about it, and more people shared it, and more people backed it and supported it and were excited about it. And it was sort of overwhelming, but exciting. Um, and a great feeling because like putting something out there that you've created can be kind of daunting and can be kind of scary because you never know how it's going to re be received. I mean, I didn't expect for it to fund that quickly. I truly thought there would be a small niche audience of people that were interested in having it and they would back it and that would be it and it would be great and I would still feel great even if it was 100 people that wanted it or even if it was 20 people that wanted it. It would still have been a great feeling, but the idea that at this point in time when I'm filming this, there are a little over six days left of the campaign. It will end next Friday, the 30th of April. Um, at this point with all, a little over six days left, it, the campaign is almost to $32,000 of funding. So about halfway through the campaign when I realized, oh, this is bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I decided to add some stretch goals. So the first stretch goal was to add the additional justice and strength card 
so that you could switch them out and have them at whichever position you want. You could have Justice at 8, Strength at 11, or Strength at 8, Justice at 11, depending on how you chose to read the tarot. So that was stretch goal number one. Stretch goal number two was adding a tie-dyed spread cloth um, that I am tie-dyeing um, with colors that match the deck. And we'll go into that later. I'm sure we'll not. I'll show you at some point, I'm sure. Um, and then the third stretch goal was adding a little white book which I did not plan to add because the hoi polloi is completely and totally RWS based. I mean it's redrawn but it's like it's the RWS. So I have been working on that because we literally blew through all three of those stretch goals within 24 hours of me posting them onto the campaign. So, at that point, the stretch goal, the last stretch goal I had, I think, was thirteen dollars or $14,000. When we blew through all of them in that 24 hours, I realized, oh, I should have spaced them out better. Um, because now we have doubled that amount, more than double the amount. So... Rather than add more stretch goals, I decided just to um, improve upon the deck, the card stock, and add, well, add potentially an edging color. Um, so I've spent the last couple of weeks working with, like, Pantone swatches and trying to figure out what color edging would look great, would look good with the fronts of the cards and the backs. Um, and then as a way to um, sort of reward the people that have supported me, um, I'm going to let the backers of the campaign vote on which... Um, you know, what color they want the edges to be. At this point, there has been an overwhelming majority of comments under my update that definitely favored matte edging and not like a shiny foil edge, which I fully agree with. I really think matte goes better aesthetically with the deck. I don't think like a super shiny edge would do well. Um, at this point, I'm sort of leaning towards matching the color in this little bubble, this blue, I think would be really nice and subtle, but like still special. Um, anyway, so I will flip the camera and sort of like give you a little walkthrough. I ordered a copy of the deck through make playing cards just so I could test out the colors and see what, um, you know, make sure things were exactly how I wanted them to be. And like the printer that I'm using is not necessarily going to use this box template, obviously, but I wanted to see how the hard box did with it. So, and specifically on the sides, because the box that we will eventually have, the final box, is going to go all the way, the lid will go all the way to the bottom and it'll have thumb, it'll have finger cutouts. So I wanted to make sure that the finger cutouts didn't show the wands or the swords. Um, and it looks like I've spaced them well, so they won't. But anyway, I just wanted to check the colors and really see, make sure that the colors were going to print the way that I wanted them to print. Um, yeah, so another thing that I thought would be fun to do is um, sort of film all of this process that I'm doing and share it with you all um, because you all were here 
before. I mean, I'm sure I've gotten new people since the campaign launched, but a lot of you have been here since before I even had this project to do. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of share the process and let you see the things that I'm doing to, um, you know, prepare the campaign all the way from, um, tie-dyeing the spread cloths to, um, printing my little thank you cards that I'm going to add and packaging up the decks and, like, just the whole thing. I think it would be fun uh, because until I launched this campaign, I had no idea what all really it was going to take to do this. And I mean, honestly, I kind of try to think of it just in small chunks and not as one big project. Because if you think about it like one big project, it can be extremely overwhelming. Because I mean, at this point, I'm going to be shipping out over 500 decks. Honestly, by the end of the campaign, I think it'll probably be closer to 600 decks. Um, and there has been sort of a learning curve with that. And um, yeah, but I think it'll be fun to share my process. So um, I think the first video I'll probably put out is testing the dyes that I color matched with the deck. And, um, you know, making sure that they match and everything and, you know, all that. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. But let me go ahead and flip the camera and let you see the actual deck and, you know, sort of roughly what you can expect. It's not, um, this is definitely not the cardstock that it will be. And... This is not, um, this is not the actual box that it will be either, but it will be a hard box, a hard two-piece box. Um, and this is the design of the box. It just isn't, this just isn't it. It's going to be better than this. So I'll flip the camera and we'll take a look. All right, so this is the box design. So this is actually what the box will look like. Um... The only difference is the actual box, the lid will come all the way to the base, to the bottom, and it'll have finger cut out so that you can easily open and close it. So these are the backs. We have this like really pretty sort of sage green and I updated the key so that it was colorful. Sort of pinks and oranges. Um, the actual deck will be matte also. This is sort of a satiny finish. So there's that. Um, so... Um, the number one feedback that I got was that I had originally gotten rid of the word the on the majors, and then in the minors, I had changed it to, instead of like two of cups, it just said two cups, and, um, I got some feedback that that was a little distracting, so I added them back and I'm glad that I did because it really does make better sense this way. Um, this is actually one of the first cards that I did and it is, I think, my favorite card in the deck actually. So I didn't really add or take away anything from the original Hoi Polloi deck. Um, I recolored it and I reformatted it so that it would be standard tarot size because the size that it was before was just like strangely a little bit shorter than this, but as wide as this. 
so in order to have it printed, I needed to like reformat the cards essentially. Um, and then I cleaned up the images so that they were a little less muddy and a little less, um, just like it, some of the cards looked almost like they had like a soft focus lens on them. And so I sharpened the images and sort of like cleaned up some of those not great little line work and stuff. Um, and then I fully recolored the deck um, in a color palette that I absolutely love. Um, and I'm really proud of the colors and the variety of color that I was able to achieve and still like be all in the same color family and all still be very cohesive because that was important to me. Um, the Knights we'll take a look at at the end because they are some of my favorite cards too. I've made all of the colors, like all the ponies are different colors, which are fun. Sort of like little carousel horses. Um, yeah, so... This Five of Pentacles also is one of my favorite cards because I really love the stained glass. I really like the way it came out. I just really love this deck. It was one of my first vintage decks and it was, um, it's the deck that I have purchased and resold or gifted more than any of my other vintage decks. And I always have liked it because it is very clearly, completely RWS based but it's like the just the art style and the way it was drawn is just different enough that it's like I don't know it's just there's something about it that I just absolutely love and the quality of their original deck was not the best and it was not fun to shuffle and I am a very aggressive riffle shuffler and so part of this project was me wanting to make a version of the deck that was um, functional and fun to use and not like, you know, a mess. And then these are the two extra cards, so you can switch them out. Um, let me pull out the knights because I love them and I think they look really cool together. So just like really fun, like, I don't know, I just, there's something about the horses that I really loved. It kind of reminds me of carousel horses. And the color palette, honestly, is very much like sort of candy seeming, like very candy colors, very like confectionery. It's a lot of people have described it as like, being edible almost. Yeah, so that is the deck. I'll have the link to the Kickstarter in the description box. And there are six days left at this point. And if you're watching this beyond the six days, then 
stay tuned because there should be an Etsy shop linked below where you can buy the deck also. Um, yeah, so thank you to the people that have already supported it. Um, and yeah, I appreciate it. I hope y'all have enjoyed this. Um, and I can't wait to share the final product with everyone.